Good day fish tankers, today we're going to do a species profile and it's about this little fellow here, the Emperor Tetra. Now the Tetras are a huge group of fish, there are literally thousands of them. We have the usual Neon Tetras and Serpae Tetras and Black Skirt or Black Widow Tetras. But this is one that's not as familiar as those, but it's not a super hard Tetra to keep, it's an Emperor Tetra. I'm going to spend a bit of time on this interesting little fish. If it sounds interesting, then stick around. A few years back, I, I bought a group of eight Emperor Tetra, six females and two males. And here's the one male that's still in the tank and how he developed over the years. And that's the first lesson. There were two males. He bit a piece of a tail of the other male, which promptly went and just died. And so it was this one male Emperor Tetra with the other females. And there's a most recent photo of him. And here you can see a nice close-up of him here hovering around in the tank. He usually has his own spot where he stays. And then he goes and checks out the females and herds them around. And he's a nice big fellow now. You can see the beautiful cream purplish colors and that's how you see a male that trident tail that was extensions in the middle of a tail fin and that is how you distinguish a male from a female and of course that beautiful blue eyes a male has got blue eyes whereas a females you see a female here yeah, it's got a more yellowish greenish eye and you can see the colors not quite so pronounced doesn't have a trident tail also that nice creamy sort of color, that purplish color, but not as pronounced for yellow in the fins, also not quite as pronounced. And here you see the females in the group. Now firstly, they're not a big tetra, but they're not a nano fish either. They grow to about five centimeters. The male is a bit bigger. The females are heavier, so they more or less equate to the same size. There you see a more juvenile male, and he was born in this tank. So they best kept in a group, at least six or so individuals together. And they're more a question of a male having a little harem of females. So it's a good idea if your tank is smaller to just get one male with a group of females or else your tank's got to be bigger. We've got these two males in here now, the younger one and the bigger one, the older one, which I know is a dad. Don't know which one he is, mom. But, but it's a big tank and it's very heavily planted. And that's the next thing. They like heavily planted aquariums with lots and lots of hiding spaces. And tank size, they're not a big fish. So bioload wise, they should be fine in a two foot, 12, 15 gallon tank. But I would keep them in a bigger tank, at least about 20 gallons or a little bigger. A three foot tank is a nice size. It doesn't have to be as big as a size. One tends to keep a, a fish in a certain size tank and then you just want to keep that as a minimum, but not necessarily true. You get some color varieties of Emperor Tetra. These are the black Emperor Tetras, where you see that black color is much more pronounced. With the right sort of backdrop, they can be very nice. I just prefer the original color, like you see, saw you in the beginning of this video, they still the prettiest to me. But, you know, some prefer something a little bit different, so then you have the Black Emperor Tetra. And here we have a fish that's often confused with a, with a, with a proper Emperor Tetra. This is the Blue Emperor Tetra or the Kerry Tetra. You can see they don't have the same fin extensions, but they have a brighter, more neonish, bluish color. Same sort of key, they stay a little smaller, but the same thing as the proper Emperor Tetra. We've, we cover tank size, keep them in groups, more uh, heavy towards the female side. And here you see them breeding. And they are egg scatterers. You see the male shimmying with a female, and then they deposit their eggs there in the Java moss. And they'll, all, they'll also use other plants. Java moss, I find, is very good for fish breeding. Um, you'll also see them going into the Valles Neria here pretty soon. After they're done there with a java moss, this is a bit earlier in the tank's life. You can see it's still at the black substrate, but it's a very same male as you saw in the beginning. And here you see them added again. This is when I changed the, the, the tank to a dirted substrate and the Valisneria started growing. They go into the Valisneria as well, and there you see the breeding activity. 
of a male chasing the female into a Venusneria. And there is a photo bomb by a Colombian Tetra. And by water parameters in this tank, it's somewhere between 7 and 7.5. There you saw, see that juvenile male when it started out with just a tiny little fry sticking out there. And then a while back, I, uh, there's, the, there's the, the, the male, that's how that tiny little fry grew up. It's now much bigger. And then I saw a second little baby popping up in the tank and I'm thinking this one is a female a little too early to tell but it looks to me like it's going to be a female and I was going to talk about water parameters they like the normal te tetra softer acidic waters although they can stand it a bit on the harder side the pH here is about 7 7.5 and the KH is 6 with the general hardness around 7 there is dad and the latest little youngster and they do survive if the tank is heavily planted with enough little food there. Guys, please leave a like and a subscribe. And until I see you guys again, keep taking good care of those domestic denizens of the deep.